hello friends uh, thank you everyone for joining this uh, webinar which is nine types of out of memory error so feel free to ask any questions at any point in time right uh, there is this uh, q a panel so there you can put any questions that you want right you can you can ask any questions okay uh, we will get started i would like to welcome everyone to this month's webinar nine types of out of memory error so we have this webinar series on a monthly basis. And I'm Ram Lakshmanan. I'm the architect of Y Crash product suite. So friends, in today's talk, we are going to be discussing about nine different types of out of memory errors. See, actually there is uh, nine different planets in the solar system, right? So there are certain cultures which believe that uh, based on the position of where these planets are orbiting, it has an influence on your mind, body, and thought process. So I'm hoping after this talk, whenever you're going to confront out of memory error, this talk would have an influence on how you go about debugging, diagnosing, and identifying the root cause, right? Okay, having said that, let's get started. So friends, for whoever is staying till end of this session, right, they will be, uh, I'm going to be sharing a link and uh, the link is going to get uh, from that you can download an ebook containing the JVM performance engineering and troubleshooting ebook will be given to all the attendees who are staying or attending this session in person right till the end okay so friends let me start off with this question we all build java applications right in a java applications we set the maximum java process heap size with the system with the JVM argument xmx Right? We set the XMX as the max heap size. We set it to be as uh, 6 GB, 10 GB, or whatever the size is. So my question is, if you are going to set your heap size as uh, XMX as 6 GB, will your Java process consume more than 6 GB of memory? Let me repeat the question. If you are going to set your Java process heap size as 6 GB, will your Java process consume more than 6 GB of memory? So his answer is yes or no. You can put it in the chat. Okay, in, in the Q&A, uh, friends are saying some of Kamal, Vasiliti, Mirslova are saying yes, and Girish is saying no, right? Uh, some folks are, uh, no, I haven't responded. So they are 50-50, right? Okay, so now let's find the answer to this question. Will your Java process memory consumption, will it go beyond this XMX limit? Let's uh, look at that. So, Friends, to find the answer to this question, you need to look into the JVM internal memory regions, right? What are the regions first? The first, the, J the JVM, pro the Java process has a region called EAP memory. So this is where the young generation and old generation is present. So as a developer, let's say I write a code, uh, new object, I create a new object. That object goes into the young generation. And if it's going to be living for a longer period, it gets promoted to the old generation. So when I'm, when I'm setting the XMX as 6 GB or whatever the size, I'm actually setting the size of this young generation and old generation alone. That's what I'm setting, right? But after that, there are other regions. Let's see what are those regions are. So after this, there's a, a segment called as a native memory. In this native memory, there is a region called meta space. See, we write a Java code, right? Those Java code contains classes. There is a class definition. So that is, I write a customer object, account object. So those are all objects. So I write a classes. So those classes, those class definitions, they go into this meta space. And this meta space, it's outside of this young generation, old generation, right? So the answer is yes, your, uh, your XMX will exceed because the meta space is outside. And then after that, what are the other regions are there? Friends, Threads are a very vital part for executing your application, right? So threads is the one which goes through all your lines of code to ex execute your application. Where are the threads stored? Are the threads are stored in this young generation or old generation or meta space? Where they are stored? Friends, they are stored in a diff another region called as a threads region. And that region is outside. They are not stored in any of these three regions. They are, they are stored in a separate region called as threads region. So they are outside of this XMX. And then... There's another region called as a code cache. Friends, that code that we write as a developer, 
it is not the actual code that it gets executed at the runtime right because the jvm does a lot of hotspot compilations and improves the code quality that is it, it uh, the jvm optimizes the code like say if i define at a string literals it makes it a static final constant it does a lot of improvements to the code for optimal performance to do that hotspot compilations it needs memory where is that memory coming from that memory is coming from this port cache which is once again outside of this xmx and then there is another region called as a direct buffer. Friends, if your application is using Java native IO package, that is to do IO operations directly, native IO operations, those objects are created in this direct buffer region, which is once again outside of this XMX. And then there is another region called as a GC in, in Java or in JVM, the garbage collection is automatic. To do that automatic garbage collection, JVM needs memory. Where is that memory coming from? that memory is coming from this GC region, which is once again outside of XMX. And in case if you're using JNI, 99.99% of application they don't use, JNI was built in 1995 when Java evolved. When it when from Java, if you want to directly talk with a C or a C++ process, use this JNI, Java native interface. But we don't use it in modern times. So if you happen to use, that is once again coming from this a JNI region, which is again outside of XMX. And friends, there are certain JVM vendors like Azul, OpenJNI, the special vendors who has certain optimizations they do for better performance. They have, they store their implementations in another region. I'm now classifying this as miscellaneous. So if you see when you are setting XMX, you are setting only a portion of your Java process memory size. But of course, this XMX accounts for most applications, it is it is 80 to 90 percentage. But still, there are other regions like this meta space, threads, code cache, direct buffer, GC, chain, and miscellaneous. They are all outside of XMX. So your Java process will consume more than the XMX what you are setting. Okay. Why do I need to know this information? Because this information is very, very relevant when you are troubleshooting out of memory errors, right? Let's see why it is very relevant. First, now I want to show you an out of memory error demo. That is what triggers an out of memory error. Let's look at it. What triggers an out of memory error? So let's go here. So here I put together a sample hypothetical program which is going to trigger an out of memory error. So let's let's uh, walk, I will walk you through this code. So here there is this class called as a memory leak demo. Here, this class has a start method. And now what does it do is it, this method is what it's doing is invoking a grow method on this object one. Let's see what is this grow method on object one does. This object one has a map manager and it's invoking a grow method on this map manager. So, Let's see this method. This is where the actual memory leak is happening. Look what uh, the code that I have built here doing. See here, I have a while true. That means it's an infinite while loop. That is a thread, thread will never terminate this. So it will never terminate. It will keep on iterating on this while loop. Look what we are doing here. Here we are saying my map dot put. So here I have an hash map. To this hash map, I'm adding a key zero. That is a counter zero. And then I'm adding a large string zero. And then once again, I'm iterating. Next time the, when the when we iterate, now the counter value is going to become one. Key one, large string one. Key two, large string two. So, so like this, the hash map is going to be built with key one, large string one. Key two, large string two. So just going to keep on build. And we're going to keep on building. When it goes beyond the memory limit, then I'm going to be confronting out of memory error. Friends, of course, no developer will put like this, they're not going to do this while true, they don't explicitly do, but sometimes accidentally it happens, right? Without their knowledge, as some data structure hash map will keep on growing without their knowledge. When that happens, and when the data structure goes, grows beyond that limit, then you're going to get this out of memory error. Let me run this program and let's see what happens. So now I'm, I'm, I'm running this program. So now when I ran, look, so, um, if you see here, I'm for every thousand iterations, I'm printing thousand records printed, thousand records printed. So it's it's getting it's, it's keep 
See, it started here. We just keep on adding thousands of records. After a point, when it reached beyond that XMX limit, look, now it got this out of memory error. See, this application now got this out of memory error, right? Now, let me go back to the deck. Friends, I told there is nine types of out of memory errors, right? How will I know what type of out of memory error I got? How will I know what type of out of memory error I got? We have been looking at, where, where is that information printed? Friends, it will be printed, what type of out of memory error you are going to be getting is going to be printed after this colon. See, whenever you get, we see only a Java lang out of memory error, after that a colon, what type of error you are going to get is going to be printed. Now let's go back to this uh, program. Here you see, we got Java lang out of memory error, after the colon, here it is printed Java heap space. So this is the out of memory error this application confronted. Right? So this is the type. Friends, so far, what we have always done is our human mind or human eye, we only look at this out of memory error. We don't look after the, what is there after the colon. So going forward, always please look. When you get out of memory error, look what you're going to get after the colon. That tells you what type of out of memory error. Because this is very critical to understand. Because based on the type of out of memory error, what data you need to capture to diagnose the problem, how you, you would, what tools you need to use, what are the solutions, everything varies. So focus on what is after this colon. So that will tell you what type of out of memory error you are getting. So now for this application, we are getting Java heap space. Now let's look into this. What is this Java heap space? So friends, this is the first type of out of memory error, Java heap space. And this is the most, most common type of out of memory error. Probably even though there is nine types of out of memory errors, 80% of out of memory errors that you are facing, that you will be facing is coming is because of this type, Java heap space. Okay, what triggers this out of memory error? Friends, this out of memory error is triggered because look at this, there is this young generation, old generation. I keep on, when you keep on adding objects, in this example, I keep on inserting the records to my hash map. And when you keep on inserting the records to the hash map, when your hash map builds up and your hash map exceeds this XMX limit, then you are going to get this error, Java heap space, right? Okay, when this happens, how do we go about troubleshooting this problem? That's what we will discuss. How am I going to dis troubleshoot this Java heap space, which is the most common occurrence type of out of memory? How we are going to do it? Friends, when you see this, the first thing what you want to do is you want to use, you want to observe your garbage collection behavior, right? The garbage collection behavior, I will tell you how to observe in a minute, but let's just show, let me just show you. This is our garbage collection behavior of a very healthy application looks like. You see, why do I see very healthy application? You can see the request is coming, the memory is building up. Now when a full garbage collection event ran, the memory dropped all the way to the this bottom. And now once again, the request is coming, memory is building up and a full garbage collection and run, memory is dropping all the way to the bottom. You see this beautiful sawtooth pattern going on. If I try to draw a line, which is connecting all the bottom points, see, I'm trying to draw a line, which is connecting all the bottom points. This line is going at a zero degrees, right? You see, it's going at almost a zero degrees or, or it's going at a point zero two degrees, something like that. Now, look at this, my friends. So this is a behavior of an application which is suffering from an acute memory leak. That is, it's not aggressive enough, it didn't crash, but it is go, it is heading towards the part of getting crashed. Why do I say that? Look at this. Here you can see the request is coming, the memory is building up. Now when a full garbage collection event ran, the memory here dropped to 22 gig. And now once again, the request is coming, memory is building up. When this garbage collection ran, now it didn't drop to 22 gig, it's dropping to somewhere like a 26 gig. As you see, the time is going on, the garbage collection, now here it, it's dropping to 31 gig. It didn't drop to this 22, 26 gig mark. And if I try to put a line connecting all the bottom points, this is a slope, basically. This line is going at a kind of a 10 degrees. It didn't go like a zero degrees like the previous one. The previous one was going at a zero degrees. Whereas here it is going at kind of this 10 degrees. 
now if this continues if this application continues this is how it will become look what's going on. here it started here it progress progress but after a point the garbage collection even the red triangle indicates a garbage collection ran garbage collection went ran and we didn't get out of memory we, we didn't we didn't we're not seeing the memory to coming down but then here it just keep on running friends even when one red triangle runs that is when one full garbage collection event runs your cpu is going to skyrocket and here you can see the garbage collection will keep on running that means when the, that means the cpu is going to be at a 9900% here it's going to be at a 9900% if there is a memory leak note on this points my friends if there is a memory leak your cpu is going to be at 100% cpu will get impacted yes because the, because the garbage collector is going to keep on running if it keeps on running the cpu is going to be at 100% right but here is a sad story all our most of the monitoring tools or not all of the money most of the monitoring tools they scream alerts only when you hit the ceiling limit and in fact jvm throws only out of memory when you hit the ceiling limit but several minutes ahead several hours ahead if you are monitoring your garbage collection activity you can forecast yes in another 30 minutes another one hour my application is going to suffer from out of memory error by looking at the garbage collection activity you can forecast out of memory errors right okay now i am progressing okay how do i study the garbage collection behavior how can i study the garbage collection behavior friends the way to study the garbage collection behavior is the best way to do it is by studying from the garbage collection log see you can enable the garbage collection log from your jvm by passing these arguments if you're running in java 8 pass this argument and this is the file path you give so when you give this file path the garbage collection log garbage collection events will be printed into this file path if you're running on java 9 and above you need to use this argument and give this file path so then the events will be dumped into this file path and friends enabling the garbage collection log all adds almost zero over it it cannot even see the difference because just few even few it's a very small file right it does not add that much over it so my recommendation not only my recommendation i have seen in several large scale jvm deployments they have the gc logs enabled in all their production servers all the time right so you can also do and now once you have this garbage collection log how do we analyze that so there is uh, there are few garbage collection log analysis too but one of the two that what uh, we make is this gcec so this is the tool that uh, we make so here this tool is available in online or it's also available in on prem edition right some people uh, several en enterprises who are our customers classify these garbage collection log thread dumps and heap dumps what we are going to be discussing as a confidential data so they they don't want to be transmitting on the internet and processed on external servers so they want to run it on prem so the on prem installation of the tool is also available now let me upload a garbage collection log of an application so how to do i come here i sign in there is also apis are also available so that you can pro the api can proactively monitor and tell you whether you going down outage but now let me just do this in a reactive manner let me upload the gc log of an application which was suffering from this memory leak now i have this uh, file this uh, gc log file i'm coming here and now i'm uploading it so now when i upload it the tool instantly processes it and generates a report see if it if it sees any issues right away it's going to report yes there is a memory leak going on how do you resolve here are the steps and it also gives you pointed recommendations to improve your gc performance increase the gc threads it gives you these kind of recommendation here why do we see why does the tool detect a memory leak because here is the live action you can see it's memory is going up and down up and down after a point it's not coming down at all so that's why the tool is reporting as a memory leak there okay now the first step is by looking at this i by confirming the garbage collection behavior i can confirm yes yes there is an out of memory error happening there is a memory leak is happening in the application it is confirmed now confirmation the first step in any troubleshooting now i have confirmed now the next step is i need to identify the root cause okay i know the memory leak has happened but now i i need to know what are the objects that is building up in the memory what is the root cause for the crash i need to do that how will i do that 
Let's go here. Let's go to the next slide. Friends, in order to do that, you need to capture EAP terms from your application, EAP term, right? What is a EAP term? EAP term is basically a photograph of your memory, right? It's, a, it's basically a photograph of your memory. What are the things which is there in the memory? The memory contains objects. And it also says, okay, this object is referenced by which object? And what are the actual contents in the object? Who is the, what are the, what is the, okay, I have a child, then I want to know who is the parent object, who is the grandparent object, that hierarchy is there. So basically, it is a pretty intense file. It is a, it is a very large file. Typically, a heap term file size will be more or less equivalent to your XMX size. Roughly, it will be the size of that, right? So how do you capture heap term? Friends, here there is a link. I will share this deck with all the uh, with uh, all the attendees. So you can go here and there's nine, eight different options to capture heap terms, right? You can use this uh, JMAP, JCMD kind of tools to capture heap terms. Or here there is also an open source script called as this YC script, YC data script. So you can just invoke the script by passing your process ID, process ID of your Java application. And this is an open source script available in GitHub. So when you trigger it, this script captures your 360 degree data, which includes the GC log and heap term as well, which we need to troubleshoot memory problem. But sometimes um, you might need other data to troubleshoot other type of performance problems. So having the script executed on your application, whenever there is any performance issues will come very, very handy for you. So this script, when you execute, what it will do is it's going to capture a 360 degree data and then write it as a, a zip file into the disk where you launch. That is one option. Or it can also transmit to our server. If you configure it, it can also transmit to the server where uh, the tool is installed. And then you can look at the analysis. So now we can capture, now we can capture this heap term. What I will do, I, I had captured the heap temp of this application, that whatever I demonstrated earlier, that is the hash map where I kept on adding the records. Now I, I have this heap temp. Now let me upload this heap temp. Let me, let's analyze this heap temp and try to get to the root cause. So to the, do this analysis, I'm going to be using the tool called heap hero, which is capable of analyzing the heap temps and giving the root cause instantly. So how does this heap hero look? So the, uh, I have this uh, here local. So here is that heap hero, which can analyze the heap terms. So what you can do, you can come here, and then you can upload your heap term file. And friends, heap term contains very sensitive information because heap term is what a photograph of your memory. What is there in your memory? If your memory processes your customer transaction, that means it's going to contain social security numbers, credit card numbers, VAT numbers. It contains sensitive information. So always do analysis of heap term on your local tools, which you can install on your local laptop. Even though this heap is available online, I would recommend uh, getting an on-prem, uh, running it on a local machine and do the analysis. Okay, you can analyze the heap term by either uploading it directly or here you can also give any remote location. Say sometimes you have captured the heap terms and you're keeping it in a S3 storage or in some, some any remote location, you can give the location URLs. Or here is also the REST APIs. So from your production servers, you can invoke this REST API and pass your heap term file. So then automatically the data is going to be pushed and then you can analyze and see the results immediately. Now here I can come in and then I can upload it. So I have this analyzed already. Let me show the analysis result of this one. So when you upload the dump uh, here, this is how the result is going to look like. So the result is going to say at the very top, if you have detected any, any objects which is leaking or growing in size, it's going to report problem detected. Right away it flashes. This object is occupying 99% of memory investigated. So what is this object? It's giving me map manager. What is this map manager? Friends, if you, if you look at this here, here is that map manager, the class. The object which which had this ash map which is growing so it is pointing out okay this is where this object is occupying 99 percentage of memory investigated right away it points you okay now if you come here friends always there's a lot of sections but let me tell you a very simple way to get to the root cause of memory leaks right so there's multiple sections don't focus on anywhere just come to this largest object section so this section prints you what are the largest objects which is there in your memory 
most almost always 99.9% of the cases probably the top 3 guys top 3 largest objects tend to be the root cause because the leaking object typically grows in size so the top largest objects are always the reason for the memory leak so now here if you see i have this map manager this is occupying 99.96 percentage of memory okay so i know this is the leaking object now my next step is i need to know what is leaking there what are the contents which is causing this object to grow in size to do that here there is this more icon right click on this and here click on the outgoing references so what is outgoing references that means what are the references going out from this map manager so if i want to see what is their object which is there i want to see the references going outside from the map manager what are his children so now i click here and when i click now i'm going to be seeing there is this map manager i want to see its children so i can drill down to this map manager you see this map manager is occupying 490 megabyte look at the what is the biggest child here 490 megabyte and this is coming from this ash map see the beautiful thing is it even prints a variable name my map is a variable name look at the code what we have here is this ash map my map is a variable name you can even get to the variable level of precision now this is the my map and now i when i drill it down see ash map is underlyingly contains a table so it's so it's pointing this is the table and if you see this table as multiple records see it it has like a 1 million records it has 1 million and 81000 records it has it is showing it's now it's displaying only 10 records if i can I can load more and can keep seeing that but you get a feeling like there are 1 million records is there what is there i can click on what are the records so here it shows me the record see the key 41494 value large string 41494 the actual raw data that we are inserting into that is visible here see we get to see them visible so now i know with this information i know what are the what are the contents which is causing the leak i can even see the actual data which is very powerful now i know this now my next step is okay i understood what are the children but now i need to know who is the parent who created this i want to know who is the parent who is keeping him active so to do that come one second to this more icon and then click on the incoming reference when i say incoming reference it shows who are the guys who is referencing them who is keeping keeping them active in memory so now when i click here i see this map manager you see this map manager is referenced by object 1 right if you re, if you go back see this object 1 is referencing this map manager i can see the hierarchy okay object 1 is referencing this map manager so who is referencing this object 1 it is this memory leak demo class right if you go back to this one this memory leak demo class is one which is referring object 1 so i can see the hierarchy of objects which is creating them and making them active right so this is pretty powerful way friends to visualize and debug uh, the problem in a table format and also in the tool there is also a chart view right the, uh, this chart it's kind of a donut chart which kind of shows me what are the objects and i can drill down okay i can see this is the object so if i click here i can see this children and now once again if i click here i can see what are the children of this i can keep drilling down like this and i can see the actual value oh i see the actual value is here so this is another interactive way to look into that as well okay so now let's back let's let's back out and let's do a quick recap of this most common type of out of memory error java heap space what causes this type of out of memory error friends this type of out of memory error happens because first reason it could be a, it may not be even a memory leak sometimes it can happen because of increase in the traffic volume what if uh, your application was processing only few million transactions but now your business is growing so now uh, your traffic volume also grows that means you need to have more memory so then also this error can happen the second reason why it can happen is because of memory leak due to buggy code like just what we saw and these are two causes what are the solutions the solution is if it is happening because of the memory leak due to the buggy buggy code then fix the memory leak the second reason if it is happening because of increase in the traffic volume then increase the heap size xmx what are the artifacts that you need to troubleshoot 
You need garbage collection log and heap dump. That's what you need. And then what are the tools you need to troubleshoot this type of out of memory, memory error? To troubleshoot GC log, you need to use GCEC. And to troubleshoot heap dumps, you can either use Eclipse Mat, EPRO, or JVisual VM. You are welcome to use whatever the tool that of your preference. Okay. So now moving on, I'm moving on to the next type of out of memory error. It's called as a GC overhead limit exceeded. Friends, this second type of out of memory error also happens for the very same reason as the first type of out of memory error, Java heap space. This happens because when your end generation and old generation saturates and there's no more room to create objects. This is the very same reason for number one as well. So pretty much in fact, if I run the same program, if I run the same program multiple times, uh, let me try running. Uh, if you run multiple times, sometimes I may get GC over at limit exceeded. Okay, at this time also I got Java HA, but if I keep running multiple times, sometimes I may get GC over at limit exceeded as, as well. So that, that is one minor technical nuance why this happens. Here is that nuance. Um, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into the detail, but here is the documentation. But your terms of analysis, your diagnosis approach is very same. Take confirm the behavior in the GC log, take the heap dump, analyze and see. It is a very same methodical approach that what you used for number one, right? So this error happens interchangeably. So nothing different. Okay. So now let's uh, move forward. The third type of out of memory error is called as requested array size exceeds the VM limit. So what does this mean? Requested array size exceeds the VM limit. Friends, Let's look at a demo for this. I have a sample program put together to demonstrate this problem. Look at this. See, look, friends, what I am doing here. Here I am trying, look at this. I'm trying, I'm saying new integer. I'm trying to create an integer array of a max value. Okay, this is like a two to the power of 32. It's a very large size. And if I'm trying to allocate a very large size array, and if I don't have a sufficient memory, XMX, then I'm going to be getting this type of out of memory error. Let me run this for you guys. When I run, you see I'm getting this out of memory error. See, now I'm, I'm getting this requested array size exceeds the VM limit. I'll get this error. All right. So no developer is going to create like this. But sometimes when there is a memory is at a peak capacity and now we are trying to create an array and there's not sufficient memory, then you will confront it. And in fact, so then you'll confront it. How to, de how to debug this problem? This is the very easiest way to debug this problem is when this error happens, it's going to print a stack trace. It's going to be, it's going to print a stack trace in your log. The stack trace is going to tell exactly where this error is originating. So here you can see it is originating on this class, on this method, on this line. It precisely points. So when this happens, it's very easy. Go to this line and see what is that integer array you're creating and see whether it's a legitimate case. If not, reduce the size, right? You can you can precisely get to the problem. So now, uh, I'm just trying to do a recap of this type of auto. This happens when you're trying to allocate an array which is larger than the heap size. And what are the solutions to do? Fix the code. If there is like this, uh, if you're trying to allocate a very large size and there's no need for that, reduce the size. Or let's say if there's a legitimate D need, then you need to increase the XMX. What is the artifact that you need to troubleshoot? You just need application log, nothing else. What are the tools? You don't need any tools because they are visible directly in your application log. Friends, here I want to take a break, just a, a minute break, and show you and tell you talk about the CrowdStrike outage, which happened last month, I think. Right? CrowdStrike had a major outage which is considered as one of the largest software outage in the industry, right? Uh, here, here there are some wallpaper news which says like, a, it drained like a $5.4 billion for Fortune 500 enterprises. Their stock plunged 40% within a month. All because of what? The root cause for that was out of bound memory read. That So that is, they, they, had an, uh, they were expecting a, 20 character limit and we're trying to write 21st uh, character and it was outside of that array bound and then it the program crashed very simple reason my friends 
these performance problems or these kind of issues are very serious right look at the impact 40% a company value plunged and 5.4 billion dollar has been lost how many airlines couldn't progress so these type of problems are very serious so we want to pay attention and try to catch them and arrest them right during the development time itself right so equipping yourself with these kind of knowledge will be very vital to become a kind of a go to person in your organization right okay so let's move let's keep moving on the fourth type of out of memory error is called as meta space right java lang out of memory error meta space this error happens because your meta space size you are you are creating more objects in your meta space size than what it what you have allocated right i am trying to create more class definitions what goes in the meta space the class definitions and method definitions they go into it say so if i if i keep on creating a lot of classes classes then if it goes beyond that meta space size i am going to be getting this out of memory error meta space now how do i go about troubleshooting this how do i go about troubleshooting this problem friends when this problem happens a garbage collection will show, garbage collection behavior is going to show a very different and very interesting behavior look at this here um the garbage collection is happening at the bottom even though this application has like a 2.2 plus gig of memory the garbage collection is running even at the 250 megabyte range you can see it is happening right here uh why because this behavior is slightly diff is, is much different from this behavior look at this here the gar the garbage collection keep on events kept on running when it's at the ceiling limit whereas here it is running when it is at the bottom because the meta space is a small region my friends it's a very small region and when this region is saturated the full gcs will keep on running your entire memory does not have to be saturated so now you can confirm this by looking at your actual garbage collection behavior so here is a sample application which happened in a very uh, major fortune enterprise right this is that actual log so they were running on a kotlin framework and the kotlin framework what it was doing was it was for every back end call it was going it was creating a new class definitions so the meta space was getting saturated so once it was getting saturated they got this error so once you upload the tool the gcc tool as intelligence to point out hey there is a memory leak in the meta space how do you resolve it here it gives you the tips to do it look this is what that actual behavior is you see uh it is happening at the right at the bottom look at this meta space region memory consumption let me remove this allocator look initially it was going up and down up and down up and down after a point it is not coming down at all right it just remains here because it's got saturated couldn't come down so that is the reason so now when this happened so this is what happened so how, uh, let me show you a demo a actual demo what can simulate this problem so now let me show you actual demo how to simulate this now look at this so this is a sample program look what i'm doing i'm using a third party library called as a java assist right i'm using this third party library look what i'm doing here here one thing i'm going on infinite while loop that is i'm saying true and then i'm just keep on looping and here what let's see i'm saying look at this line number 17 here i'm saying class pool dot make a class and the class name here look what i'm saying com buggy up meta space object i'm appending a random number so every time i'm creating a new class definition which has a different unique random numbers so when i keep on creating where does this classes go these these classes goes to the meta space and when meta space reaches its limit i'm going to be confronting this out of memory error meta space um, problem mm -hmm. yeah let me run it for okay so now you can see every, every for every 5000 new classes it creates it prints this log 5000 classes created 10000 so it it was able to create like 140000 new classes after that it is confronting this out of memory error meta space right this is what happened so when this happens how do i go about troubleshooting first one is confirm the garbage collection behavior see whether uh, your gcs are running when when is at the bottom point you don't have to do the tool will confirm that for you yes it is a meta space now when you do that 
what you want to do is I want to see what are the contents which is there in the meta space. What are the classes that is loaded into the meta space? How do I look at that? Friends, to do that, what you want to do here, yeah, see, to your JVM, you pass this flag called as a verbose class. If you pass this flag called as a verbose class, when you pass this verbose class, what it's going to do is whenever any new class is loaded into memory, it's going to be printed in the in the log file. Now let me run it. So when I run it here, see the same program I'm running. Now it says, okay, I loaded this class. I loaded this class. So it keeps printing me. So now I will know which classes are getting loaded. Always there is some framework or anything. If it keeps loading, now I'll get to know, okay, it is happening from here. This is where, this is the object which is loaded. So this is a clear indication what gets loaded. So then we can go ahead and arrest this problem. This meta space that is enabling that verbose class will help you to fix this problem. Okay. So now how to, so if you are running till Java 8, you want to pass the verbose class. So that's going to print all the class definitions that are loaded into the memory. If you're running from Java 9, you want to use this argument, class load info file name. So when you give a file name, that is going to print all the classes which is loaded. So this is the flag you want to pass to your JVM. And then you want to see what classes are getting loaded and you want to fix it. So now I'm, if I'm doing a recap of this uh, out of mirror meta space. This problem happens when I'm creating large number of dynamic classes. And friends, if you happen to be running on a groovy type of scripting languages or using Java reflections, like in the Java assist I told, and then this, you, this problem is going to happen. And sometimes, my friend, this may happen, not because you're uh, of your code. It could be happening because maybe your application, you keep on adding a lot of third-party libraries. So you're adding a Spring framework, Hibernate framework, Jackson. You are keep on adding a lot of frameworks. That means what it is, a lot of jar files, a lot of class definitions. If you add a lot of third-party jar files, those all the class definition, that means you're going to load more class definition. And more class definition means your meta space is going to get saturated. Then also it can happen. What are the solutions? Check whether if it's because of the leak, like this in the class assist example I showed. If there is a case, fix it. But it's happening because of you want you're adding a lot of third-party jars, you need it for your application. Then in that case, increase this meta space size than what you have allocated. Increase that. So what are the artifacts that you need to troubleshoot? So pass this verbose class for uh, Java 8. For Java 9, pass this. There's also a couple of other approaches, but the, there's a little tedious. So I'm not I'm just showing the best way to do, but I just documented for the sake of completeness. What tools you need? You need GC log analysis to confirm the behavior and then look into the application log. Okay. Okay. The next type of out of memory error is called as a perm gen space. Friends, perm gen has been removed from Java 8. If only if you are worried, you need to be worried only if you're running in Java 7 and below versions, you need to be worried because whatever the meta space is doing today from Java 8 onwards, that's what the perm gen was doing before. That is a class definitions were loaded into the perm gen, but they were the perm gen was in the heap memory. But now the meta space, they have moved it to the native memory, but it's the same functionality. It's the very same functionality. So the diagnosis approach, whatever to diagnose out of memory or perm gen is same as meta space. Nothing different. You just want to study the loaded class into the memory and then you want to fix it. It's a very same approach. Okay. Now we are getting into a sixth one, a very interesting approach, which is uh, interesting type, unable to create new native threads. Friends, this problem happens when the number of threads grows in size in your application. Where, because the threads are not created in this young and old and meta space, they're created in this separate region. So let's say there is some thread leak is happening in your application. Your application ends up, so typically it has like a 300, 400 threads. But because of some issue, it started creating thousands and thousands of threads. When it starts to create thousands and thousands of threads, then you are going to confront this unable to create new native threads. Okay. Friends, think about it. Whenever we get out of memory error, what is our immediate response that we do in our, in our organizations? What we do is we increase the XMX, right? That's what most of us do. We increase the XMX. If you increase the XMX, will it solve this problem? It will not solve because when you increase the XMX, you are actually increasing this heap memory. But the problem is happening in these threads. Like it is like if I'm going, it's like I'm having a fracture in my hand. 
but my doctor is treating my leg right it is pretty much the same so when you are out of memory or unable to create native threads what you want to do is you want to study the threads behavior not the objects objects behavior you want to study the threads behavior how do i study the threads behavior you can study the threads behavior by capturing the thread dump right thread dump is basically a snapshot of threads which is all running in the in your application in your memory so i want to take all the threads that is running i want to study that not i don't want to study the objects in this case i want to study the threads how do i capture the threads here there are nine different options to capture the thread dump so you can use the tools like a jstack or jcmd kind of a tools to take a thread dump but once again i want to emphasize you can use this yc script which is open source script which is going to capture 360 degree data which is a comprehensive data to troubleshoot so one of the thing it captures it captures a three snapshot of thread dumps in a gap of 10 seconds and gives it to you so you want to use this okay friends for this demonstration of this unable to create new native threads i am going to be using a real case study so this problem happened in a very major financial institution it happened in a middleware platform in usa right so now i have their actual thread dump but of course anonymized and we got the permission uh, because they are our customers so i'm going to take that and i'm going to show this to you right let's look at that so this is that actual thread dump which was captured and then analyzed now friends look at this this is the thread dump analysis of the of that middleware platform the financial institutions middleware platform so yeah look at this this application is right now is having 1859 threads but typically it has only like a 300 or 400 threads that's what it has now it is having 4x 5x more threads it is having so now th this what is our thread dump analysis tool there is a fast thread this tool what does it do it does lot of pattern recognitions it sees over oh, the threads are stuck there whether there is something is building up there are so many pattern recognitions it does so one of the pattern recognition that what it do is called as it tries to group the threads which have the identical stack trace and comes up with the count see friends typically when there is any bottleneck in the code all the threads will try to navigate and get be stuck on that bottleneck so that means multiple threads will start to exhibit the same stack trace so here this what it tries to it tries to recognize what are the threads which have the identical pattern and if they are in a very high count then it flags this kind of error so here it flagged an error see so it's saying it is 1700 threads are stuck waiting for response from this oracle database it can slow down the transaction examine the stack trace see even though like this application has like a 1859 threads more than more than 95 percentage of the threads are having the exact same stack trace so what is the stack trace let's look at it here so this is a stack trace you can see it is originating from this oracle package see since this being a middleware as you know the middleware talks with multiple system of records hundreds of system of record and one of the primary system of record to which it talks is an oracle rack cluster so this oracle the database vendor they told to this financial institution hello financial institution set this flag called as ons that is online notification service to be true so when you set it to true what will happen is your jdbc driver instead of uh, in the rack cluster if any one node has an outage immediately it's going to route the transaction to the other active nodes in the cluster so your availability will go high so enable this flag ons to be true so this middleware team the financial institution also enabled it to be true but the contrary happened my friends instead of uh, increasing the availability it worsened right for every call it went it started creating a new thread every back end call a new thread was created and it was never terminated due to that uh, the thread started to grow and then the application confronted this out of memory error unable to create new native thread once they had this stack trace this dump analysis then they show to the vendor vendor acknowledge oh sorry this is a bug in the implementation they fixed it and then the problem went away so when this type of out of memory error happens what is the cause the threads are leaking so what are the solutions um, you want to fix the thread leak but friend sometimes this error may happen because of some kernel limit in the kernel will have a limit saying your application can create only 512 threads 1024 threads it would have a limit 
And if you go beyond that limit, then also this error is going to be thrown. In that case, you want to increase the U limit, right? And what is the artifact that you need to troubleshoot? You need to use thread dumps. What is the tool you need to troubleshoot? You want to use a fast thread or you can use a thread dump and analyze it in some text editors. You can do that, right? Okay. Hence, the seventh type of out of memory error is direct buffer. Hence, what happens was, so if you want to use native IO, there is a Java NIO package. If you want to use native IO, then they those native IO objects are not created here in the zip memory, but they are move, they are created in the direct buffer. Recently, we are starting to see this error more pervasive in the industry because of uh, major frameworks like a Spring Boot and all, they are moving the workload from this region to this region for a faster processing. So when you move here and if there's not sufficient memory, then you are going to confront this error. So how do I how, how do I simulate this problem, right? Or is a demo for this? Now I'm going to be running it. See, here is a program. See, here I'm using this NIO package. I'm trying to create a byte buffer, which is a very large in size. Now let me run this. When I run it, I'm going to be getting out of memory error, direct buffer memory error. See, I'm getting this error, direct buffer memory. One good news is when this error happens, it's going to be printed in the stack trace itself. I mean, directly printed in the stack trace. So you see, this is this is where it originated. It shows the exact class and line. So now looking at this, you can go ahead and arrest the problem. You can go ahead and fix the problem. So what is the recap of this type of out of memory error? See, friend, this type of out of memory error happens when there is an increase in the direct buffers usage. This happens because if you're using NIO package or in spring framework, earlier they were using a REST template, but from REST template, if you move to web client to do the REST API processing, then also you will get this error. Or if you're using some networking libraries or JDBC drivers, which does the direct NIO, then you will confront this problem. What are the solutions? If it's because of the example of this legitimate memory leak, like what I showed, I'm trying to create a very large byte buffer then it, it can happen. So you want to fix the code. Other option is you can increase this max direct memory size. Increase it, say by default, it, I think it is 100 MB. You can make it as 200 MB or 300 MB and fix it. And also friends, what we are seeing is in Java 17, they have made a lot of improvements to this direct buffer region. So, if, so upgrading to Java 17 and above is an another option. What are the artifacts that you need to troubleshoot? You need to use application log because in the application log it prints where it's happening. Or you can also do a native memory tracking, right? To do it. Okay. Friends, the next type of out of memory error, the eighth type of out of memory error is so kill the process or sacrifice the child. This type of out of memory error will happen when kernel kills your JVM. Kernel can sometimes kill your JVM because of lack of RAM capacity. Because when there's a lack of RAM capacity, there's so many jobs are running and there's not enough memory. Then the, kernel, then the kernel can kill your JVM. When kernel kills it, it slaps with this out of memory error, kill the process or sacrifice the child. But one unfortunate thing is when this error happens, this is not reported anywhere other than the kernel logs. How do we get the kernel log? The kernel log, you can get it by issuing the D message command. That's why when, when you issue this YC data script, it's going to capture a 360 degree data. One of the data it captures is a D message, which is going to contain a kernel log. This is how um, the kernel log analysis looks so here. It's going to print out of memory error, kill the process. It prints this Java process has been killed. The tool analyzes and prints you this. Okay. So the last type of out of memory error is called as recent stack trace with native method. This happens only if you happen to use the JNI. That is from a Java application, you're directly connecting with the C, C++ process. And if anything happens to your thread, which is making a call to the JNI, then you are going to be slapped with this error. But typically, we most of us, 99.99% we are not using it, so we don't have to worry about it. But if you happen to confront this error, you need to be using the native tools, operating system native tools, like a D-Trace, PMAP, and PStack to look into this problem. Okay, so friends, with this, I'm coming to the end of my slide. So friends, if you, if you notice, right? If you're going to get Java heap space and GC overhead limit exceeded, you need to take GC log and heap temp to analyze. 
If you are going to get the third type of out of memory and the seventh type of out of memory, which is requested array size exceeds the VM limit and direct buffer memory, then you need to use the application log. Whereas if you're going to get metaspace or a perm gen, you need to use GC log and verbose class logging. If you're going to get the sixth type of out of memory error, you need to use a thread term. If you're going to get the eighth type of out of memory error, then you need to use the D message, right? We don't know what error I'm getting. Right? And then also always the performance problem is an unknown territory. We don't know what's going on there. So the best way to equip yourself is with sufficient data. Equip yourself with sufficient data to diagnose the problem. So that's why catching this 360 degree data will help you. So this script is an open source script. You can take it. It's going to capture 360 degree data. And once you have the data, what you can do, uh, say here is our white crash enterprise edition here you can upload the 360 file 360 degree bundle file or you can just directly push it here so when you push it you are going to be created an incident report is going to be created like this for you in your calendar which is for every incident a 360 degree analysis is presented to you like this so these are the issues we found in these artifacts these are device level problems this is how your application log looks you have that all the data in one place to troubleshoot okay Okay, friends, um, with this said, thank you, uh, I'm coming to end of my talk. Thank you everyone for taking your valuable time to attend this session.